Okay, so before you start a colour, it's important that your client is gowned correctly. You need to have clean gowns and towels placed over your client with a plastic cape also to protect their clothing. The stylist should have relevant PPE. This is in the form of an apron, gloves, and the option of a mask and a goggles or visor. Currently, during COVID-19, the stylist is required to wear these, as is the client is required to wear a mask. As a stylist, always have your trolley set up with all the things that you're gonna need for that service and have that in a position to reduce fatigue and injury to yourself. Now, before any colour can carry, be carried out, there are some fundamental tests that need to be carried out. The first one is a skin test, and this needs to be carried out 48 hours before your service. And to do this, a small piece of colour is applied behind the ear, and reactions that we'd be looking for, which would stop the service from being carried out, would be redness, itching, or irritation of that area. If the client doesn't have a reaction, then you're safe to proceed with your colour. It is the law to do a skin test and everybody has to have a skin test. The other two fundamental tests that you should carry out before all colours, the first one is an elasticity test and this is carried out by taking a damp piece of hair between your thumb and forefinger and you are stretching and seeing if the hair returns to its original length. Now if you stretch the hair and it returns to its original length, this displays that the hair has good elasticity and the internal strength, the cortex of the hair, is in good condition. But if you were to stretch the hair and to return it to its original, um, it doesn't return to its original point, this shows that the hair has poor elasticity. So that means the cortex of the hair is in jeopardy. So any colours that you use could cause further damage, particularly if these are colours are alkaline based, like permanent or lightness. The second test that you would carry out is a porosity test. And this is carried out by running your thumb and forefinger up the hair shaft and you're feeling if the hair feels rough in any areas. Now often towards the ends of the hair, the hair could be feel a bit more porous than it does at the root area. Now this is really important when colouring hair because if the hair has poor porosity, that means that area of the hair may absorb the colour much quicker. So that area, part of the hair could take the colour quicker or it could give you an uneven colour result. So to help this, you can apply a porosity leveller to those areas which are damaged or have poor porosity to give you a much more even result. So they're the three key tests that we should carry out before all chemical services. Okay, so for my client today, she's coming to have her root regrowth. So this client had a colour six weeks ago and her roots have grown out. So she, she's coming in today to predominantly have that area root retouch, we call it. So first of all, I need to assess what she currently has on her hair. So I'm using the colour chart to help me determine this. So in my colour chart here, I obviously have my depths just here, my basics, and then I can look at all the different tones according. So I'm going to assess what she has on the ends of her hair because she can't remember and there's no client records. So first of all, I'm going to try and find the tone. Now looking at it, it's quite warm. So I can see it's not golden. It's got a little bit more warmth to it. Um, it's not quite red. It looks more mahogany. So I'm going to go for something that has some 0.5 in it. So a mahogany. So looking at my colour chart here, I can see that actually this colour matches around about a 7.35, okay? So seven being my light blonde or my blonde with some gold and some mahogany in it, so 7.35. So I've shown my client that colour and she says, yeah, that's the colour she has. So that's what we're gonna be using. Now I need to determine what her root colour is though. Am I gonna be lifting her colour or am I gonna be staying on the same depth? So going to my naturals page, I'm gonna determine what she is naturally by looking at her root area. Okay, so you'd be looking into her root area and seeing, you know, is it darker, is it the same level? Now, when I look at her root area, I can see that naturally she's a base six. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a 7.35, so I'm gonna be lifting one shade up on this client. So she's a six, I'm taking her to a seven. So 
So I only need to use a 20 volume peroxide with that because I'm only giving her one level of lift. So I have mixed up in my bowl 7.35 with 20 vol. I'm using Majorelle, so it has a mixing ratio of one to 1 1.5. I've mixed up half a tube of color and then I can always remix if I need any more. Most um, half, you know, she's got sort of, um, she's not got really abundant hair, it's not sparse, it's sort of in the middle, and normally half a tube of colour is sufficient to cover um, that amount of hair. But should I need more, I'd go back and mix up more. I would never over mix, you know, I wouldn't mix a whole tube because then I risk throwing some away um, and that doesn't help with our sustainability. So how we're going to start our root regrowth is, it is just the roots, so it's about um, a quarter of an inch in the root area. We're going to section the hair all the way through the middle and we're going to apply our colour first of all down that middle section starting around the back section. Okay so we're only applying to the regrowth area. You need to be really careful that you don't overlap that colour onto the existing colour because that can form something called colour banding and then you get an uneven colour result. So you're just applying it just to where their roots have grown. So like I say, this is about a six weeks regrowth on this line here. Some people may leave it longer, but then that would be a slightly different um, application technique and that would be called a long regrowth. So use your comb to help move the hair out of the way so you get a nice clean area for you to see where you've got to um, focus that colour on. Okay, so I'm just going all the way through the middle. So I'm using this colour to actually help me section the hair into my four quadrants. And then once I've got my four quadrants, it makes it much more methodical. So I've just applied my colour all the way through the middle. And now I'm going to section it into two sides and two parts at the side. Again, just use your comb to help you section it. Again, only apply to that root area. Keep your brush nice and clean so it makes it um, easier for you not to get colour on areas where you don't want to, which is why we always mix using a spatula rather than mix using a brush. Okay. And then the same on the other side. So just here, I'm going to subdivide the hair into two parts again. And apply to that root area yet again. So remember, only the roots. So this client, before she came in today, she had her skin test done to make sure she wasn't allergic to the colour. And I checked that um, that skin test had had no reaction. And then before I proceeded to do the colour, I carried out that elasticity and that um, porosity test that we talked about. Okay, so I've now got four quadrants and it's been divided by my colour. I'm now going to start working on the regrowth area First of all, on my back two sections and then my front two sections. So take nice small sections using the end of your comb or the end of your tinting brush and apply, like I said before, only to that root area. So make sure you really push that into the roots and work down that section. So when you take up the next section, you should still be able to see some colour from the section before. So if you're taking too big a section, you may risk um, missing some root area. Apply that onto the roots. So bear in mind the different hair types that you may have. So type one hair we know is very resistant. So we may need to increase our development time. So our, our manufacturer's development time is 35 minutes, but we may need to increase that for type one hair that's resistant, but we may decrease that time for types uh, hair types three and four um, which take very quickly to colour. So this area is your root, so it's, it's fresh hair. It often doesn't have poor porosity, so we don't need to apply a porosity leveller to the root area. But when we come to do our fade technique on the ends, we may well need to use a, fade, a porosity leveller to help get an even result with that. So I'm nearly through my first section. All the way to the bottom so as you get close to the bottom don't don't rush don't start taking bigger sections you still need to make sure that you take those nice small sections and apply it evenly 
only to that root area. Try and be nice and clean with your working, so don't get the um, colour all over the client's ears and neck. So keep control of your brush and where that colour is actually going onto the hair. Okay, so once you have finished the root section on that piece, you're then going to move to the next back section and you're going to repeat exactly what we did here through the next section. So I'm going to proceed to continue putting that colour on. Okay, so once you've finished your root application, what you first of all need to do is you need to go back and cross check that you haven't missed any areas. So how do we cross check? So how we cross check is if we took our sections in this angle, we would cross check the opposite way. So we would literally just go back and just pull our hair apart on the opposite direction to make sure that we hadn't missed any root areas. You do that all the way through the hair because if you miss one section that could be one odd bit of colour. Now if you do spot an area that you've missed throughout then you would just go back and then you would just reapply to that section. So just cross checking in the opposite way. Once you've cross checked and you're 100% sure that um, there is colour everywhere you would go around and you would clean your client's hairline with a damp piece of cotton wool or a damp piece of tissue. Okay so you're just going around and making sure that there's no colour touching any of their, um, their skin, ears, nape area, anything like that, okay? Now for some clients, this is all they have, they just have the root area because they may still be happy with the colour on the ends of the hair. But for some clients, they may have been out in the sunshine, they may have been doing some swimming, and they may have done something that has caused the ends of the hair to fade, or they may have just lost their shine. So what we can do at this stage is we can offer a fade technique service, which will refresh that color. So depending on how much fade you have on the ends of your hair, depends on which fade technique you would use. So there's three fade techniques. There's a minimum, a medium, and a maximum fade technique. So the minimum is for that client who has only just lost a little bit of shine, but no depth. And how we do that is with the remaining colour in our bowl, we add 15 mils of warm water and we apply that during the last five minutes of your development. If the client has a medium fade, so this means that they've perhaps lost one depth, so they, they, their colour doesn't look like 7.35, now it looks more like an 8.3, um, or they've lost that tone, so they've lost that mahogany warmth and it's gone more ashy, that would be your medium um, fade technique. So for a medium fade technique, again we add 15 min mils of warm water to the bowl and we apply that for the last 15 minutes of the development time. And then we get a client who has maximum fade. So this is the person who's been on holiday to Barbados or they've spent all, they spend a lot of time outdoors and their colour has faded completely. So their depth now, instead of being around a 7.35 on the ends, their hair is, is nearer um, let's say a nine or a 10. So they've got maximum fade. So what we then do, if for that client is again, we apply 15 mils of warm water to our remaining color, but we apply that directly after we have applied to our root area. So because it has the water in it, it dilutes it slightly. So it's obviously not as strong. So we're not gonna end up sort of with a darker color on the ends. So I'm gonna to say today that my client has a, a minimum fade. So I'm gonna pretend now that we're actually at 30 minutes development time. 
So I'm now going to apply this colour to the ends of her hair for the last five minutes. Because as you can see, my client doesn't have much fade at all. Okay, so, so for some clients, you won't need to do this. It's only if you feel they have got that, that fade. Now, once you apply your water to the bowl, you will find that the colour is quite watery. So be careful not to drip it. And then you're literally going to apply that through those mid lengths and ends and you're going to work that into the hair. Some people do this at the basin because it is quite watery. Um, that's personal choice. So you're just going to work that through. And because it's got the water in it as well, it actually makes it really, really easy to soak into the hair. So just section by section, you're going to apply that through those mid lengths and ends and work it in with your hands. And then, so I'm going for a minimum fade technique, so I would just leave this on for five minutes, and what that'll do in them five minutes, it would just gently refresh that color on the ends of her hair, bringing that shine back, bringing that tone back to her hair. But remember, if it was a medium or maximum fade, it would either need 15 minutes before the end development or the full development time. So I'm just gonna work through Again, always start at the back of the hair because it's the most resistant area and you're going to work your way around these four sections. When you finish your application, again, go around with your damp piece of cotton wool or wet tissue and wipe around the hairline area and make sure that there isn't any um, colour on their skin to prevent any skin staining. Now, this colour works through oxidisation and it needs oxygen to get to the colour. So what I, we mustn't see you do is that you plaster the hair flat on the hair. Make sure that the oxygen can get to all parts of the hair. So let it be free. Let, let the hair sit sort of quite freely over the head. So I'm gonna quickly whiz through my last few sections with my fade technique. And then like I say, this one would be developing for five minutes before my colour removal. So don't forget, whilst you're applying your colour, talk to your client about how they can make their colour last longer. Talk to your client about shampoos and conditioners that would be suitable for coloured hair. Talk about, you know, if they do have a job that's outdoors, talk about UV protection. So our 10 in 1 spray isn't only a great porosity leveller, but it also has great UV protection, protects it from heat. Um, and also perhaps if they do work outdoors, talk about perhaps using a hat as well to stop the fade on the hair. Uh, if your client's a swimmer, um, you may want to suggest using a swimming hat to prevent the fade. So you, this is an ideal time for you to give all this advice to your client whilst you're putting your colour on, okay? So make sure they understand how they can get the most out of their colour, how they can get it to last as long as possible for them. Don't leave all that advice to the end because by the time you're coming to the end of your service, you'll blow dry following your colour, your client may be in a hurry to get to their car. So use the, all, the whole service time that the client's with you to make sure that you cover all of that aftercare advice. It's so, so important that we educate them on all of those matters. So you can see it's much easier to apply with the water in it, but it is very, very watery. So, you know, be careful you don't get it onto the floor, etc. So you can see here, and got quite a bit of staining just where it's been flapping around. So I'm just gonna clean that up as I go. And I've got my last section now to apply to. So like I say, we don't want it sitting on their face, the color, but we do wanna make sure that it's not plastered down to the head. We need to make sure that that oxygen can reach all parts of that hair so that the color can oxidize properly and evenly as well. So already that root colour will be working. It's got the heat from the scalp to help that start working. And then in, after five minutes, the ends, that five minutes will be just enough to refresh that colour. So if you do run out of colour, obviously go and mix up more, but remember to apply your warm water to it. So the benefits of the warm water is the warm water helps to open the cuticle to allow this colour to penetrate better in. So that's why we use warm water rather than cold water. Okay, so I've applied my refresh technique all the way through. So like I say, I'm gonna pull the color off the face, but I'm not having it plastered down to the head because I want that to oxidize um, evenly throughout the hair. So I'm just gonna go around and finally just clear up her hairline 
and leave her to process for that final five minutes before we do her development, okay? Okay, so once your colour has um, fully developed and you've done a strand test to check your development, it's time to remove your colour. So with a permanent colour, you need to emulsify the colour off the hair. So we're going to apply a small bit of water and then we're going to emulsify using our fingers in a rotary formation. Now I've got my PPE on for my removal, just like I did for my application. So nice and firmly rotational movements over the scalp to help remove that off the scalp. Now, often skin staining occurs not just through poor application, but also poor removal. So you need to really, really work at getting that colour off the scalp. One thing you have to remember is tint removes tint. So if you see tint and you rub tint on it, it helps to remove it off the scalp. So you keep emulsifying and rinsing as you go along to make sure that all the hair is free of that colour. And you keep doing this until your water runs almost clear. So for, for reds, the, it will always be a, a sort of faint pink colour, but for your browns, it should be able to run completely clear. So emulsify, rinse, emulsify, rinse, all the way through. Now, when you come to um, put your shampoo on, you need to use an antioxidant shampoo. So this is a shampoo that's gonna stop that um, chemical from proceeding. So it has an acid pH. So from our range, we could use the L'Oreal Post Color Shampoo, or we could use the L'Oreal um, Color Shampoo. So that's the uh, Vitamino Color. Now that's the color you're gonna be recommending to your client. So it's good to use it so they can smell it, you know, and experience it on their hair. So once you've removed all of your color, you're going to remove excess moisture you're going to take your shampoo, obviously emulsify it in your hands, apply using your effleurage technique before you start your rotary. So I would at this point be telling my client what I would be using. So you can say this is the shampoo we discussed earlier. The benefits of this shampoo are, so you talk to them about um, helping to give better colour longevity, talking about how it would obviously improve the condition of her hair, um, talk about all the things that she can relate to. So don't start talking about acid and alkaline because clients won't understand what you mean by that. So you're gonna give two shampoos using all of your massage techniques. So I'm gonna do my second shampoo now. To make sure we get all of that color out of that scalp. You don't want to leave any residue on their scalp because that could cause irritation and it could also affect the next part of your service. So really, really important that all of that colour is removed off that scalp. So I've still got my gloves on at the moment, but I, I could take them off now if I wanted to because all of the colour is out. And then finally, I'm gonna finish with my conditioner. So just like my shampoo, I'm gonna be using what I'd be recommending to my client. So again, that they can smell it and experience it on their hair. It's much easier to recommend something if you're actually using it. So make sure you get all that shampoo out. Just gonna take my gloves off for this stage now. I'm just gonna have a quick check through, make sure I have got all that color out, which I have. And then I'm going to use my Vitamino Colour Shampoo. And I'm going to apply that using my effleurage technique, okay? So you can disentangle that with your fingers at this point, or you could get a detangling comb if you wanted to. So bear in mind their hair type. So some hair types um, can be, might, might require more conditioner. So types three and four may require more conditioner than types one and two. So, you know, whatever you need to help disentangle that hair. Now the colors actually left my client's hair feeling really lovely and soft and conditioned. So it does actually feel really, really lovely. Don't forget to tell them about the conditioner. Um, and also if you're gonna be using a leave-in conditioner, make sure you tell them about that as well. Okay, and then rinse your conditioner out of the hair. And then you'll finally 
going to towel dry. So notice I have all that I need right beside me. So it's all accessible. Okay, and then you would towel dry your client's hair, ready for the next service.